Plastic crack is a thing. I totally am in on the plastic crack. I think plastic crack is a perfect description. Because once you get addicted, you gotta have your next fix. Where's the next big thing? I mean, I guess I kind of resonate with the plastic crack analogy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I'm just a user, I'm a heavy user, I guess. <laughs> I agree. I mean, it is plastic crack. Once you get that one piece, you're hooked. <laughs> you know what, there is no misdiagnosing plastic crack. Welcome to Plastic Chats, the special interviews of the Plastic Crack documentary series. Hi, my name is Guillermo Olivo and welcome to Plastic Chats. Remember that these are additional to the Plastic Crack documentary series. We're slowly getting back into face-to-face -face interaction, finally. And, and this is a special episode. I could not be happier to do it in person because remotely it would sound amazing. I, I can assure you that, but it's, it doesn't it doesn't equate to doing it in person. I have two VIPs, two very special guests today that I I, I basically grew up listening to them, and now they're in front of me. They look different than how I remember, <laughs> but I would like to welcome Mr. Kenny, and Mr. Newman. The Thundercats, for crying out loud. Hello, hey, hello. How are. are you? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> How's Florida treating you? Florida's great. I love the people down here, don't you? It's war. Yeah. It's certainly warm and welcoming. <laughs> yeah. It's certainly warm. It's warm, warm, yes. But uh, the people down here are really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it. How was? How was? Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad my people are taking care of you. Yes. You know, you never know. Uh, and, but it, you're well deserved because you're well, you're you. legends among voices, not just Thundercats. <laughs> It's obviously, when, when we were prepping for the interview, it was obviously, so, okay, let's go and talk about Thundercats. No, I want to talk about a little bit <laughs> before getting into the cats or after the cats, even Silverhawks, right? Um, what was it like to work at Ranking Bass back in the day? Like, it, that was the right company, the right time? Tell me about it. Yeah, it, it was the, the right time, the right company, the right time, and it turned out to be this great, fun, job that ended up lasting something like two and a half years uh, and for us we had the, the pleasure of doing the voice first so it was like radio because we got to act out as much as we wanted they would do the animation to our soundtracks a number of the other projects at the time other cartoons they had the animation first and so the actors had to approximate the lip syncing to the characters so we had a lot more freedom to just Go nuts <laughs> in the and, studio. And were you part of the company with the switch from stop motion to actual cartoon animated features, or were no? Uh, we came. I know. I didn't. I only got there for uh, Thundercats. It was my first job with them. So they had switched already from stop motion, uh, which they had done more in the 50s and 60s. I think mm -hmm. the 60s. I guess we right. did do. If you recall, we did do mm -hmm. a. Uh, uh, Claymation. Uh, the Life and Adventures of Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. Yeah, that was a, a, a was it, yeah. region, uh, uh, I'm sorry, seasonal you know, holiday. And, uh, and how, is, how is that different from the regular process of animation? I would yeah, love to get yeah. a little bit. Well, it's, it, for us, it's not different. No, it was. It's the same. Our process was the same. Yeah. It's just instead of creating animation, they were doing, as Larry says, claymation. Yeah. Where they had figures and they synced to whatever extent, you know, they, they move the mouths to mm -hmm. our soundtracks and then move the figures. Right. Yeah. right. We Instead didn't have to drawing. do anything Instead different. We didn't have to do anything different for nope. either one of them. We had the same freedom in the <coughs> studio, like radio, as if we were doing radio. Yeah. It's a more complex concept. I, I, I'm geeking out. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm geeking <laughs> out because I hear you and then I, I can get a sense of Tiger, which yeah. I know you did, <laughs> and in your own voice were more elaborated. Right. But when I hear you, sir, I have a mix of, of feelings, to be quite honest. I don't know if I have to drink, uh, eat my cereal right now, <laughs> or if I have to go and tune in B BH1. I, you know, or race a sort of woman. I'm a little like, well, why don't we start on, on your end and then I have a few questions okay, for you yeah, on that right. side. Talk me about the cereal times and, and the thousands of jingles that you did. And well, uh, I had the privilege for 40 years to be the voice of Count Chocula. <laughs> and Sonny the Cocoa Puffs bird. So um, that was a lot of fun too. It's, it's basically you're, you're doing the same 
kind of work in the studio, and then they're animating to your, your voice and everything. Uh, but there's nothing, to me, there's nothing more fun than doing lively characters, you know. Uh, like Sonny the Cocoa Puffs bird. He's always up here. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs all the time, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, so that's, that was a lot, a lot of fun. And of course, when you're doing a commercial, you're only on there for maybe an hour okay. in the studio, you know, sometimes 15, 20 minutes. Uh, whereas when we were recording the, um, the series, Thundercast and Silverhawks, we did, uh, we would work all day. Typically, right, an episode days. in the morning and an episode in the afternoon. Oh, two yeah. episodes per day, that's, that's... But only yeah. two days a month. Um, it, it, it's, it was, uh, my recollection at the busiest time, it was two days a week. We were there maybe, maybe every week. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's been four, it, almost yeah, 40 I, I know, years. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. And worry. he's getting older now. I mean, <laughs> what? I remember. I'm sorry, what? See? Yeah. See? Sure. <laughs> Whatever he, huh? However, how is that relationship between you two? Because technically, your character was on a learning path, and your character was trying to teach her. Yeah, and just like real life. Did that come up in the booth? Is yeah, that this is just a real life. I'm still teaching Larry how to behave in public, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, have you taught, and the, the lesson worked or not? No. <laughs> I, I do just enough of what he taught me to get by. So, and then when we're not together, I don't have to do anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, no. but, but see, listening to you also go like, oh, BH1, BH1, BH1. How was that experience? Are oh, you talking about uh, the uh, best week ever? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> my fondest memory of that job, and I did it for a few years, uh, it was, it was a, one of those shows, one of the first, I think, of the uh, clip shows, where uh, they show a clip, a short clip from a, a recent TV show, and then I make fun of it or whatever, or something like that. Uh, but the voice, I wish I hadn't picked that voice to use because it... You wish you hadn't? I wish I hadn't picked that particular oh, voice. Why because, is that? Oh, because by the end of the recording session, every day, every time, I could barely speak. Oh, wow. Because, for those of you who don't know, uh, it started out like, um, it's the second week of January, 1985. Oh. The best week ever! <laughs> and I had to do that all through the show. So, uh, but I feel like your characters are, are very energetic. Yeah. Why is that? Well, I think I think that's the whole idea of using animation and, and, and using an, an announcer to add some kind of excitement to, uh, for example, the TV show, The Best Week Ever. Uh, some of the clips were, were not exciting. They were, you know, just interesting. So to keep up uh, the, the pace of a half an hour show, they wanted somebody uh, crazy like me to you know, go, well, that was certainly fun, wasn't it? You know, it makes it, it makes you think you're having more fun than you really are, I think, if you're watching. <laughs> what about duality? I'm very impressed, I've always been impressed, and specifically in your case, Mr. Newman, with, with you, you do monkey and yeah. tiger, is, it's like polar opposites. Yeah. How do you achieve that? It's, uh, you know, it's an acting job. Doing animation, like, so, you know, it's another form of acting. And so once the character is explained to you, if it isn't obvious just from the, the picture, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, uh, so then, then you decide, well, okay, what is, what is this character's energy level? What is this character's pace? And the director, we had a wonderful director in Thundercats, Lee Daniker, mm -hmm. terrific lady. Uh, and so you would take your shot, you'd make your interpretation, and then at the end, <laughs> so many times at the end of a take, she would, come through the microphone from his side and say, well, yeah, that's going to be good. <laughs> Meaning it's not good yet. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. We're not yet. It's going to be good. That, that was interesting. Yeah. yeah. In other words, one more time. Yeah, one, one more time. time. Yeah. And, and, and if we were under, you know, not enough energy or too slow, too fast, not clear enough, we would get direction. Uh, you know, as actors, you, take, you get the direction from the director. And then you, you know, do it again. Uh, but now that but, you mentioned... And, and I just, just want to say that, I mean, obviously part of the fun of a job like this is getting to do these different characters uh, with totally different personalities. Uh, that's what, you know, that's part of what keeps it interesting yeah. as work, you know? It keeps it fun and interesting for you, us. You really get to, uh, with, with cartoons, animated series, you really get to do what we call chew the, chew the scenery. Yeah. Uh, meaning yeah. overact. Sure. You just totally, especially with villains. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, the, the Thundercats themselves were half, half human and have, so they 
they didn't want any character voice for they didn't want any cartoon voices for us. Correct. So those were basically our own our own voices. Uh, and th that was fun to do, but any actor will tell you whether it's on stage, I think, or movies or cartoon show, uh, the most fun to do are the are the bad guys. Yeah. Because you can really, you know, just like mum sure. raw, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You can let it out. Yeah, really yeah. really let it go. Is it true? Yes. Is it true? Then yes, <laughs> you're saying yes. I don't know so yes. That yeah. when you went into the audition, they said, this is a cartoon, but we didn't want it to sound like a cartoon. They didn't want the the voices of the Thundercats themselves, yeah. Lionel, Tigra, Chitara, to be, quote, cartoony. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? It could be exaggerations of a, a, a normal, as you say, yeah. you could hear Tigra mm -hmm. in my voice. Uh, yeah. But it was a little bit lower and a little bit more deliberate. So, a human voice. But mm -hmm. when you get to the bad guys, then they want the cartoon, cartoony sound. Like that's, that's over the you, top. Over the top. Exactly that's, like monkey. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I used to. <laughs> or I remember, Jack -O I remember oh yeah, same thing. I remember thinking so many times watching him do monkey, and I'm glad I didn't get that character. <laughs> because it was so, it had to be so rough yeah. on your throat. They were, yeah. yeah. And talk at the same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They were so days. I, so, yeah. Go get him, Peter. <laughs> There's a few episodes which I'm not, if I'm mistaken, you're, you're bad character talks to the good guy, mm -hmm. right? So you're basically you're talking to yourself. Yeah. Did that Sometimes. Come out? Yeah. That happened quite often actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there were also happily uh, for us at least in terms of fun, uh, there would be times you'd be doing that and you'd you'd lose track of which voice mm -hmm. you had to say which which line. And you'd speak your line in the wrong voice. Yeah. You'd, you'd switch or something, and yeah. everybody just you know take a laugh, have a laugh, <clears throat> take a break, and you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Let me do that again. I remember several times I was doing Lionel and just broke into Count Chocula. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, funny well, interestingly, Lionel uh, broke into Count Chocula. I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like Peter said, um, well, some people depend on on the uh, the, the performer, the, the actor. Some of us like to, I, I preferred to, in those like, situations, let's say Jackal Man was talking with Lionel, I preferred to do mine in what I call real time. In other words, uh, um, Yeah, talk to yourself, yeah, literally. Talk to myself back and forth. Yeah. Like, uh, Jackal Man, what are you doing here? Wouldn't you like to know, Lionel? Well, it's not good, I can tell. And you're with Mumra, aren't you? Yes. That was more yeah. fun for me. Sure. Some, of the, some people like preferred to do all of one character's lines for that scene, and then do all of the other characters' lines and have them have them mix it up. Your your voices became immortal. <clears throat> this will be those cartoons yeah. will be forever That's and right. ever plastered with your True energy, revived the hard work and dedication yeah. Yeah. that obviously worked because yeah. it's a still an icon so many years later. So thank it is you. amazing. Yeah. Thank you because you gave us those amazing deliveries and uh, yeah. that we were, I could not wait to come back from school and just tune in and watch the show. And I saw it in, in, in two different times of my life. Yeah. You have portrayed Lionel in different iterations, um, and, but also the Jaga in another... Well, I, I played Lionel in the original, in the original. original right. series, and then uh, in 2011, the Warner Brothers rebooted it. Right. And in that one, I played Lionel's father, Claudius. Right. And then in the most recent one, <clears throat> uh, Thundercats Roar, which did not become a big success. Uh, I played Jaga of all, of all these oh, people. Okay. So yeah, I've been. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a new one coming out, and I think uh, they want me to play Tiger in there. <laughs> or monkey. Well, well, that's all right because I'll do Lionel. <laughs> and you, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Just to start, <laughs> there's, there's something about that. Uh, shortly before we came here, before I came here, um, I was asked about a particular voice on, on, an, on an episode, on an episode of Silverhawks. Um, time, time, time Stopper was the character. And I didn't, I remember the character kind of, but I didn't remember doing the voice. So I, I went and listened to the episode on, on the computer. And I'm listening to the voice, and I still can't decide, was it me or Larry who did the <laughs> yeah. voice? Yeah. I still wasn't sure. It turns out it was Larry. Oh, wow. <laughs> but in some yeah. ways we have, you know, Very a, similar voice. a similar timbre yeah. that we can, you know, play around like yeah. that. And so there, you know, there you go. You know, it wasn't just Thundercats, it was also Silverhawks. And, Silverhawks, and, and yeah. And again, that, that switcheroo of now I'm talking in a different way in a different yeah, character, sure. that's very admirable. I, I, I really, I think I'm speaking on behalf of about millions of fans <laughs> out there who are saying, 
were not worth it. Like, thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you for that. Well, thank for you. That's that that certainly our pleasure. Never get tired of hearing that, dude. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. To, uh, to, to wrap up, were, did you ever walk into a toy store back in the day and saw the toys and, and had, like, what was your take on the toys back then? Well, I have a, what I think is a very funny story. There's a true story. I've told this a million times, but it's a true story. We didn't know, of course, as we began doing the shows, whether they're going to be popular or not. Because sometimes you, you, you'll record several of them, and it's months before they're on the air, and you don't know what the ratings are, you don't know if it, you know. Uh, but after a year or so, we began, to, we knew yeah. the show was very popular. But I didn't know how popular it was until uh, one Christmas, I was shopping a few days before Christmas, at uh, Toys R Us. Rest in peace, Toys R Us. Yeah. And the last time I had been there, uh, they had like two aisles of, um, I don't know, He-Man or, uh, you know, Ninja Turtles, whatever. And they had one aisle of Thundercats, because it had only been on a little while. This time when I got there, I walk in, and there are three aisles, both sides, of nothing but Thundercats. And I said, we got to hit them right This show's a hit. And as I'm walking by the... Um, section that had the uh, action figures in it. There were two little guys, maybe maybe 10 and 8, something like that. And they were they were looking at the action figures and as I walked by I heard one of them say, I'm gonna get Tigra. He's the oh. best one. Oh, there he's gonna he's the he's, he's, and the other, kid, kid. the other kid says, <laughs> the other kid says, no I want to be Panthro. He drives the tank and all that. Well I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I, just, I walked over and I said, hey fellas, why don't you get Lion up? He's the one who says Thundercats. Oh! And these two little kids looked at me like, like I was a pervert, probably. Right, mom! And I just, I realized I gotta get out of here. <laughs> so as I walk away, I heard one kid say to the other one, he didn't even sound like uh. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I thought to myself, if he only knew. Uh, if he only knew, yeah, he was talking to actual yeah. Lion. Well, <laughs> I was just, yeah. I just, uh, uh, about the toys, uh, years later, when they had disappeared from the air, Thundercats, you know, whatever the, the contract problems were, the company was sold, bought, sold, whatever, and it was no longer on the air for quite a while. Uh, probably a holiday time or something, or we had a, a niece or nephew with a birthday, and we went into KB, KB Toys, rest their soul, right. uh, yeah. you know, looking around, and there I see in the sale basket, Thundercats toys. <laughs> so I look at it, oh, come on. It's so I bought a few. I bought a few. You got a few. I bought a few. Got a few. Got a few. Got a few. Yeah. I bought a few. And then another time, I went to another toy store, some Toys R Us maybe, I don't know, whatever it was. And then and there's another sad pile of Thundercats toys sitting. So I picked up a few more. So I still have them. Please tell me. Oh, I was going to ask. Please tell me that you have them. You know that I they're still very have valuable. So yeah. I happen to have a, um, a Bengali. It's not mint condition because wow. it was, you know, on a toy rack somewhere a little you bit. You played with it a lot. I did. That's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> so I still have these things, and I, you know, uh, that's amazing. Just, yeah. Who knew? I mean, and they were all on sale, you know, a couple yeah. of dollars or whatever. Who yeah. knew that yeah. we'd be here 35 yeah. years later talking about, it and these things would be so valuable? Yeah. But to me, the most incredible thing is the um, um, animation cells. Yes. The last few sh shows, if you remember, Peter, they brought yeah. boxes and boxes. Yeah to the studio of animation cells and said, guys, take whatever you want, we're just gonna burn them anyway. Yeah, we're they were just in. discarding all of it. And now I see those on eBay for $2,000 a piece. You have some? Un unsigned. Unsigned, yeah. yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah so I, I picked up uh, some characters uh, from both of the series. I have a, you know, I have a Tigra, a Quicksilver. I don't know if you remember from Silverhawk, Seymour, yeah, the taxi, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Seymour was one of my favorite characters, yeah. you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So I have a, a cell, an animation cell of Seymour. That's uh, amazing. So, That's yeah. amazing. Speaking of toys, you know that there's there's this debate in the South American toy community about the weapon of Tigra because it the bolo whip. Right. Apparently, there's a bolero, mm -hmm. which is uh, used in Argentina. It's like yeah. an ancient weapon in Argentina. Yeah. It, is there, was there ever a description or something like that? Maybe you can clarify this. I, I mean, Maybe. it was obviously a bolo. You know, a bolo whip. You know. The structure's a little different. I think the, the real uh, one is three separate, uh, you know, separate strands uh -huh. that they would swing. It, it would like to hog tie, tie cattle uh, 
that kind of thing. I don't know about against other people. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> but uh, that's what I might, uh, you know, the on the pampas, uh, the pampas, you know, the gauchos we would use it. Yeah. But there was never a description or anything that said this is this is related to that, right? No, no connection made. No. Okay. No. We're killing a myth now. We're yeah. killing an urban legend. <laughs> Before we go, um, um, uh, well, first of all, thank you for your time and uh, you. to taking some sure. time to do Pleasure. the interview. There's this gigantic group in Chile who knew that I was going to be here, who knew that you were going to be here, and they're, they've been harassing me for a month. <laughs> in order for you, if you can send them a message just to say thank you, oh, and, sure. and they'll, they'll freak out. Well, um, um, uh, hola, <laughs> amigos del Grupo Thundercats Chile, Eduardo Mendes Fuentes, con mucho gusto. Thank you for being such great fans of Thundercats. No it's solamente Chile, pero uh, eh, todo uh, Sudamérica. Todo América Sur. Eh, sí. Uh, todo el mundo. México, Venezuela. Muchas gracias, gracias uh, por. Uh, thank you for watching us. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you, if, if it weren't for the fans, we wouldn't be talking about this here today. That's right. We'd well, be we talking, but nobody would yes, listen to it. I'd be talking to Tiger, yeah, Tiger think, like this. Say something. Come on, say something to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And thank you for putting that energy and that delivering in your creations. Thank like, you. by the way, you two belong to the two coolest opening sequence yeah. in animation ever made. Yeah. It was like a silver hawk and, so and, hot. and yeah. Thundercats were the, the, the coolest ever. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that out. Just to show you how much, uh, what the Thundercats, that first job was, when I started doing, when I in effect got the job, you know, to do uh, Quicksilver and Silverhawks, I said, I'm the Lion O of Silverhawks. <laughs> there you go. That's true. That's true. Fair enough. What do you think of that? I'm not sure yet. No, I'll give, give him time. It. He'll <laughs> resent it for a while, but it's okay. Well, once again, thank you for your time, and thank you everyone for tuning in. Please make sure to check the links below so you can check the rest of the content. This is an amazing comeback to face-to-face -face interaction with two megastars from my childhood that I really like so much, the Thunder Thundercats. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you. so much. Gracias, amigo. Gracias. For more super cool interviews like this one, please check out our Plastic Chat special interviews available on Vimeo On Demand. And if you haven't seen our Plastic Crack documentary, please go to Amazon Video or Vimeo On Demand and give it a try. You'll find all the links in the description below. Thanks for tuning in.